Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Now, we're not going to have a word of prayer. We're going to have a word of praise. <laughs> Glory to God. What a week, man. What a week. Hallelujah. Lord, thank, thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you've you so opened much. our eyes in so many places and ways where we're seeing depth now and words that are, that are coming more deeply into our hearts and minds mm. about where this nation is right now. And regardless of how deeply we get into trouble, no human being can destroy this nation. Mm -hmm. This nation belongs to you, God. And there's no one person, no one political party. It cannot be done until you are through with it. It will never destroy this country. The devil doesn't have the authority nor the ability to do it. And we're so grateful to you for it because we are one nation. In your eyes, we're one nation under God. And we're still indivisible. The devil can try to divide us and he can divide up political parties, but he can't divide us as a nation. Can't do it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. We're so grateful to you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory amen, to God. Amen. Amen. And, um, Oh, for all of those of you that uh, don't know Professor Greg Stevens by now, I don't know where you've been, but welcome, brand new people. <laughs> Greg Stevens is, uh, uh, well, you, you just tell them your assignment at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. I teach Old and New Testament, but the truth. I teach survey and truth, getting into the covenants and angels and demons and the things that uh, are in the scripture concerning what God said to and us. And your promises. love and study for the Hebrew language. Yes. I've been doing it for a long time. And I'm still a student. I'm yes. still taking classes. And I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But it, it's his insight in, into, in, into the, the eyes and language of rabbis because he has very, very good friend. I'm going to tell about me. When, when you were in San Diego as yeah. a pastor. And uh, I'm going to tell it my way because I That's like, okay. <laughs> And so, anyway, good friend, local rabbi in San Diego, right? Yes, sir. Yep. And so, Greg, Pastor Greg in that day, said, teach me your book. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And he said, all right, I will if you'll teach me your book. That's right. Now, wouldn't you like to bend a fly on the wall? And that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say much. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, because I could even open my mouth. I did I, I'm so... I was allowed to be part of an online rabbi's forum where they would talk to each other about questions in the Word, and I never answered. I just, I just read, yeah. just listened. Oh, my, 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 my. But I wanted to learn the Word of God the way the disciples would have learned it, and so that's why I began to study Hebrew. Yeah, praise God. Amen. So, think about the privilege that our students have to learn like this. And that's the reason he is, that's the reason he's a professor, not just an instructor, because of his knowledge of the Hebrew language. And, uh, oh, anyway, I won't get any more than that, but uh, that, that's what makes this so eye-opening uh, to, to know the different Hebrew words concerning sin. It's not all the same thing. Well, it's not in English either, but people don't stop long enough. Thou shalt not kill is a, a huge example of this. And all of you know it, but I'm, I'm going to speak to the audience. Thou shalt not kill in Hebrew is thou shalt not murder. Yes, sir. Well, I don't see any difference. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's that way in English. Mm -hmm. Right. There's accidental sure. death. There is self-defense. And then there's premeditated homicide. That's correct. But killing is involved in, in, in all of them and has different connotation in a court of law. And the reason came from a different place in you. Whether it was premeditated, oh, yeah. it came from a different place, yes, which sir. goes to iniquity, transgression, and sin. You see that. 
Yes. Amen. Go ahead. Here we go. Genesis 15. We're back in this covenant with Abraham. This all started when, when you were given the instruction here in, in verse 16, in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Yes. What does that mean? Why did God throw that in here? Uh, let's, let's continue to unpack this a little bit. I mentioned um, yesterday that the doves were not divided when God had them all divided because it, the, the sages, the rabbis teach that that represents Israel. It represents not just Israel, but the covenant people. And if you read it in the Song of Solomon, where they get that from, chapter 2, there were two doves. One was placed in the cleft of the rock. Do you remember when Moses was placed in the cleft of the rock? Guys, all of the little parts connect together so that he could see the glory of God. It represents the two covenant peoples. Praise God. The two, the let, two let testimonies. Me, let, let's, let's do that. Let's, yeah. let's go to that, uh, that ninth verse. Take me a heifer of three years old. That's a big animal. Mm -hmm. A she-goat of three years old. A ram of three years old. Those are large animals. And a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Right. He took unto him all these, and he divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. Now, I talked about that yesterday, where the larger animals, you divided them down the spine and let them fall where they would, creating a path of blood. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know why you didn't divide the birds. They're not, Israel's not to be divide, divided. This is happening in the land. Now, that, this, that little bit right there. Yes. Man, I, I, and so they never will. They never do. Oh, that is, that is magnificent now, but you, let me information. Look, look at verse 11. And then the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham, or Abram, not Abraham yet, Abram drove them away. Satan comes to steal immediately. Immediately. He what knew what was happening here. Yes, He's he seeing this thing happening. And the birds, Jesus will teach this very thing, yes, that the birds will come immediately to steal. And so... He is, that is his natural thing of what he's doing in Abraham. But when it times comes time to walk through the blood, Abraham can't do it. He's of a sin nature of Adam. And so God's going to pin him to the ground, slay him in the spirit. He's fully aware of everything that's happening. But Jesus, the glory, will walk through it. Let's, let's say it again. We are talking about God and blood covenants. That's what's happening. Blood. Yeah. And this was the first one. This, uh -huh. well, for practical purposes, sure. this, was the, this was the first. And then in the 17th chapter, it went from the, bird, the, the blood of these animals to the blood of a man through circumcision. One step at a time, all representing the blood of God. And all of this had to be absolutely perfect yes, in every way. Right. It took hundreds and even thousands of years, and, which seems like a long time to us, right. to get Jesus in here. Just days to him, minutes and days. Yes. He said, but before all that happened, he said, out of your spirit, out of your inner man will come that seed. This is a substitute. So now when you get on here and you look at this, um, get down here to verse 13. He said unto Abraham, Abram, know of a surety that thy seed, he begins to tell him what's happening, shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Pay attention to that. 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward, shall they come out with great substance. Now, and then again, here, that, that, that's God. He doesn't want you without substance. No. No. <laughs> they worked all those years for nothing. Right. Well, they're going to get paid in the end. Yes, sir. And here's the thing. You're going to get paid in the end with this <laughs> thing with the Amorites. This thing is not over. Uh, where, do, where do they leave off? He, then he tells him about him personally. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Now, that's a, what a blessing that is. That means Noah, I believe that means his own earthly father became a believer mm -hmm. and was righteous. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Now, verse 16. Now, here's where a shout hit me because I didn't understand it for a second. In the fourth generation, 
They shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. All right. The rabbis teach this, that when you don't, when you see something that contradicts itself in the Word of God, you step back and you do a dance because God's about to reveal something to you. So I did it right here on these verses. Abraham, you're going to be spared the sight of this. You're going to be buried. You will not see what's going to happen to your descendants in Egypt, but know this. I've got them. I'm going to bring them out of here with substance. They're going to come back to the place where we're walking in the blood. You don't, you're not, I'm going to spare you having to see all of that. You saw Sodom and Gomorrah, but you're not going to see this. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to bring them right back to this place where we cut this covenant. But he says, in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not full. And I noticed something. When I went back up here and I saw, saw this word, it said 400 years. And then it said fourth generation. In the fourth generation, they'll come back. But wait, you said 400 years. Isaac, but they, it took 430 years for him to enter in with Joshua. So something's wrong. I got 400 years. I got four generations. I've got another 30 years. Isaac wasn't born yet. Isaac's 30 years old. There's your 430. Yeah. The clock doesn't start until that promised seed is here. That's right. So that's when that 400 price, God, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. And I realized something. The, the rabbis talk about there being four kingdoms, Egypt, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Yes. And all of these, if you study the Amorites, they came out of Syria and Persia, and they moved in to what was Israel. In that 400 years, Lucifer is going to send as many p different groups of people into that land to corrupt the land that he can. He said, but I'm going to bring them back and they're going to push them out of here and they're going to drive them out. And then I realized something. Wait a second. He said 400 years and he said four generations. In Abraham, Brother Copeland, and see if my math is right, a generation is 100 years. In Abraham. But wait a minute. Jacob was outside of the land for 20 years with Laban. So I can make it 100 to 120. <laughs> Wait, I thought a generation was 40 years or 70 years. In Abraham, right here, it's 100 years. Because he said in the fourth generation. That's when it'll be time to attack the Amorite and drive them out of Canaan when the fourth generation, I'm going to bring them back. So I saw a modern application to this. Let me show you Galatians chapter 3. Oh, man. Oh, I hope you have shouting shoes on in place to, I wore them this a morning. place to move, church, that are watching. Everything, so here's the thing. If I'm in Abraham, everything that's promised to Abraham is promised to me mm -hmm. in that covenant of Genesis 15. Galatians 3, verse 6, even yes. as Abraham believed God, we just read where he believed him. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. That's in Genesis 15. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. I'm part of those stars. <laughs> and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. That's Genesis 12. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You wrote a whole book on it, yes, the blessing yes, the blessing book. And Genesis 15 covenant was to his seed and included the land because he says, I'm bringing you back to this land. And the iniquity of the governments that are in this land are going to be driven out. They're in the way, the iniquity of the governments that were in that land, the Amorites and all the others, are in the way of the blessing. The government can get in the way of the blessing. And when the government gets in the way of the blessing, that's when he acts. Yes. <laughs> Genesis 15 covenant was, was his seed and included the land and that included the blessing. So now I can't go to Israel and say, I'm a believer. And because I'm a believer, I'm the, the seed of Abraham. I want five acres in the Galilee. They won't honor that. <laughs> but what about my land? I'm not natural seed, but I'm spiritual seed. So I can have a covenant of the land and I can have possessions. We just saw it. Sure. They're going to come out blessed. So I started thinking about this and I started, pre, I started 
Lord, show me. And I, that's my prayer every morning. People say, how do you see the stuff you see? I say, reveal yourself to me. I do it every morning. Lord, reveal yourself to me today in a way I maybe didn't see you before. And he's faithful. I see, it happens all the time. You mentioned it earlier this week. George Washington made a covenant. But mm -hmm. wait, before that, the Puritans, oh, yes. the Puritans made a yes. covenant. And I started, you want to understand the election and the iniquity. And before that, when they set up that cross yeah. at what is now Virginia Beach. Yes. And dedicated this land to the preaching of the gospel of Christ. Set a cross out there knowing that none of them would ever leave this land and, and go back to England. Right. One of them, a pastor. I believe his name was Hunt. And several of them died on that voyage, gave their lives because they believed in it. And they got here and they sunk that cross yes. and dedicated this land. That would be, that's well over 400 years ago. Well, check this out. When they came, when the Puritans came, the Pilgrims came, the Mayflower Compact yes. was the first governmental body that we had yes. in America. Let me tell you when it happened. The Puritans were persecuted and religious persecution and they leave. It was November and I believe it was November the 11th of 1620. 400 years, four generations. Let's talk about each one of those being 100 years. So they come and they make a land covenant on this land. In 1620, November of 1620, 1720, 1820, 1920, 2020 November. What happened in 2020 November in the governments of this land? I'm telling you, till the iniquity of the Amorite is full. Okay, so I started doing a little research. So you guys get chills on you? I get chills on you. Yeah. In, a revival broke out amongst Native Americans yes, with the Puritans yes, in 1620. 1720, let's go 100 years. Here's the thing. If each generation, God called Abraham because he would teach his children. If each generation teaches 80% of the godliness and the things that we know, mm -hmm. and then they do 80%, and then they do 80%, within four or five generations away, we, we know less than we knew because they didn't get the full knowledge. And that's what we've done. We've allowed teaching to do that. We've allowed it to change. 1720, our rights, our rights from England begin to be infringed upon. And we have the beginnings of the Great Awakening in 1720. That'll cause America to be free. That's in full swing by 1730. So that's the first 100 years. In 1820, well, what happened in 1820? Well, we're a country now. And there's a man named John Quincy Adams. Mm -hmm. And John Quincy Adams tries to end slavery. And every time he tries it in Congress, they shut him down. He even survives an assassination attempt. But John Quincy Adams has a young disciple that will carry the mantle for him when Quincy's gone. And his name's Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Mm. And that's 1820. In 1820, Darwin sets sail on the Beagle. So now we have iniquity. At the same time that this is happening, oh, yeah. we have that happening. Darwinism and evolution, is Rick Renner says, is the last of the last days. When that starts to happen. Well, see, we started the last days on the day of Pentecost. That's right. This is that which is spoken of by the prophet John and Joel in the last days. That's when we started the last days. 1920, go forward. Progressive socialism hits America. That's right. It begins in America. We have a Scopes monkey trial that happens, talking about evolution. And public schools then begin to teach that you came from monkeys. They begin to teach evolution based on Darwin. But now if you look at this, you had the Second Great Awakening happening in those 1800s between that, the 1900s. So while sin and iniquity abounds, grace is abounding mm -hmm. as well in this nation. So what do we have around 1920? Well, right around that time, you have an Azusa Street revival. Oh, you, have, you have Wichita, Kansas, where the Holy Spirit is yes. being poured out with Parham. So while all of this negativity is happening in America and, and Satan is instituting his system 
into this country to bring her down in the 400 year mark that God prophesied, he knows what the dates are. And so while all of this is happening, we have great revival springing up in America, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so as I began to look at that, Pentecostal churches all began popping up and then we get to 2020. And in 2020, I fully believe, and this is me, I'm not speaking for this ministry, this network, that there was, the election was stolen. I fully believe it. Well, no and I fully believe that there were other things that happened in this country. The prophets weren't wrong. What's happening is the cup of iniquity is fully coming. Now, I got to thinking about this. The Lord asked you something if you would live to 120. Yes, you did. So I started thinking about 2020. See, it was 430 years. If I add another 30 years on, you're about there. Yes. To the 120 mark from your age right now in mm -hmm. 2020. And I realized I now know why God <clears throat> asked you to do what he asked you to do. Because when I return, will I find faith? Praise God. And actually the word of faith. The word of faith. Because that's what he said to me. I have a lot of people that live a long time but not for the specific purpose of preaching and teaching the word of faith. So I took the, now, let me, let me back the dates and let, I laid let, them over let, each let's, other. Let's, let's get over on, on yeah. the other side of this. World War I. Yes. That's in the 1920 era. Yes, sir. Just prior. Uh, Allenby opened up Jerusalem and yes, the Jews did. wouldn't go home. The Balfour uh, Declaration, right. 1917, That's all right. of that timeline. All of the timelines in the natural line up with this timeline in Genesis right. 15. Now, now then, in World War II, mm -hmm. in World War II, the only nation that came out of World War II was the nation of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was established. God created a nation. Yes. Not a, not a UN created nation. Yes. It was 1948. And the United States was the was the deciding vote. That's right. The deciding vote was the United States and that caused them. President to be Harry Truman, a Democrat, signed it immediately. Yes, he did. And if you look all of this stuff right here in Genesis 15, you get to the end of this. The same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. There it is. And to thy seed I've given the land. And he gives them the borders of the land of Israel. And he talks about all the different people that live there that are going to be moved out of there. And that's America. The guys, that's the timeline. All I did was take 400-year timeline of America. Do we have a covenant? And I went to see and I went, my goodness, it was November of 1620. And we had an election of 2020. And we, what I'm trying to show you is not to put you into fear, but you are in the end of the age of iniquity of the Amorite. Praise God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're out of time. Oh, isn't this a blessed time? We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.